Yahoo Finance is out in Las Vegas for CES 2024. Catching up with some of the biggest names in tech and talking what's next for AI. Akiko Fujita spoke with Jack Wiest, Intel Auto VP and GM, about the company's automotive chip efforts and the future of AI PCs in the car. Take a listen. This new lineup of products brings the best of the AI PC and all the reliability of the data center into the vehicle so automakers can evolve their architecture away from fixed function to software-defined and dynamic architectures going forward. So how does what Intel's announcing change the way these EVs are structured? So what it means for an automaker is uh, before you'd kind of design a, a car around an engine. Now you can start with a battery and a computer. And build the rest from there. And so it really frees up their opportunity to do some really unique things. So one of the other things that we announced this week is that we're also going to be the first supplier to deliver a chiplet based product for the automotive industry and allow our customers to integrate their own custom chiplet inside of our products. What does that mean? So what that means to an automaker is if you've got some special, let's say AI algorithms inside your company, or um, you really want to do something truly custom and differentiating that only that automaker's brand will have, uh, in the past you'd have to build a fully custom chip, which is incredibly expensive. With a chiplet based approach, the automaker can develop just a small chiplet and we will integrate that into our product and then deliver it back to them. So it's kind of a hybrid custom approach where they get the benefits of a fully custom differentiated piece of silicon, but at a fraction of the cost. Fraction of a cost. What are we talking about in terms of where it is right now mm -hmm. versus where the cost can be? It'd be about a tenth as expensive as building a fully custom. One tenth. One tenth. What about from a user perspective? How does the experience change for the driver? So what it means for consumers is they're gonna be able to enjoy a bunch of new kinds of experiences in the vehicle that they've not enjoyed before. So we announced this week with Zeker, a leading Chinese electric vehicle maker, their new living room experience uh, powered by Intel's new software defined vehicle products. And so what that brings is AI capabilities. So you can have a conversation with a generative AI voice assistant. It means you can play high-end PC games productivity applications, video conferencing. You know, it's really a, a mobile living room or workspace on wheels. We have been seeing this transition mm -hmm. um, in cars from just sort of cars as we see it to, you know, machines on wheels, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, what does that ultimately mean for Intel, the opportunity you see given just how electrified and digital more and more of the car experiences. Yeah, I think you said it, every, with everything becoming more digital, the opportunity for companies like us who provide products that process all those digits uh, becomes even bigger. Uh, we estimate that currently uh, silicon as a percentage of a vehicle's bill of materials is only about 4% of mm -hmm. the total cost. By the end of the decade, that will be 20% of the vehicle's bill of materials will be spent on silicon. One of the other things you've announced is um, this ability to, to manage power mm -hmm. more efficiently. I would tell you as an EV driver myself, mm -hmm. that perked up my ears, right? <laughs> yeah. How does it work? Yeah, so we announced uh, a definitive agreement to acquire Silicon Mobility, which is a company with an innovative power energy delivery uh, system that could deliver significant enhancements in the efficiency of power delivery. So imagine uh, a, a battery that's 30% smaller or a range that's 30% longer. Uh, that's what we'll be able to do with that technology. But more, if we combine that with the rich contextual information that's inside the car, such as who's driving, What's the weather outside? Where are you going? We can now make energy management much more intelligent uh, where it is not today by combining all of that information together to give you more accurate range uh, or to make sure you get to your destination because we can turn off other things that aren't being used to conserve energy. So it's really about bringing intelligent energy management to the car and taking a whole vehicle platform approach in terms of how we manage that, that energy source. So given Everything that you have described, mm -hmm. the further integration of, of chips, software in these cars. When you think about Intel's business overall, mm -hmm. I mean, so much of it is driven by devices, PCs. Mm -hmm. Autos itself, how big are how big of a revenue driver can it be? How much bigger is that pie gonna get for Intel? Yeah, we think it could be huge. You know, So when we looked at a different industry that went through a similar trans transition, think about smartphones. 
you know, where we went from feature phones, which were fixed function, lagging nodes, smart function, smartphones, which were really software defined and leading node. Uh, and so in 2010, about 20% of the market was smartphones. By 2020, 80% of the market is smartphones. We estimate today about only 20% of the software def- of the vehicle market is software defined or electric. And in 10 years, 80% will be. So we're about to see the same explosion of growth opportunity for Intel in this space. And that's why we're positioning ourselves to be able to help the industry in this transformation. So here we're showing what would be a vehicle. You've got a digital instrument display cluster. You've got an e-mirror. Uh, the front passenger might be enjoying a game. You've got a navigation app. And then up here, we're showing four additional displays that you might imagine in the rear seat of the car, uh-huh. where perhaps one of the kids is watching a movie uh, and another one is playing a game. Up there in the upper right, we also have a conversational AI Mm -hmm. assistant. So bringing AI into the car and letting Mm -hmm. people talk and have a conversation uh, with their voice agent. So all of this is running on a single product. Is this how many screens we're gonna see in cars in the future? (laughs) We have requests (laughs) from automakers for 12, 14. In a uh, car? Everything is becoming a display. You know, and eventually you'll think about your windows as transparent displays. Think about a kid playing a game in the back seat where they're looking out the window, touching the screen with a transparent display. So amazing wow. things are coming in cars because of this technology. And when are we gonna to start to see this integration in cars that are on the market? This product here will be start, will commercially ship this year and the end of 2024. So in the next couple of years, you're gonna start seeing vehicles in the market that have these capabilities. And what does the future car look like? <laughs> or what is the experience inside the future car? I wish I knew, but I think what it's going to be, I think it's gonna be more personal I think it's going to be more predictive and understanding our needs and wants. And it's going to be a lot more intelligent, whether it's more accurate range estimation uh, or it's giving you better rerouting advice on Mm -hmm. your trip. Um, It's going to be a lot more enjoyable experience. That was our own Akiko Fujita and Intel's Jack Weiss.